Good evening. <clears throat> Welcome to our concert in this new venue. We were unsure how things would uh, turn out, but I think um, we're going to have a great time this afternoon. When I was a kid, way back, my recollection this time of year, the World Series was over by this time. Well, it's not. And so this next piece that we're going to do, Casey at the Bat, that famous poem um, by Ernest Thayer, Vincent Trout is going to come join and narrate as we play this piece. Hopefully you'll be able to pick up the connection between the music and the uh, poetic text. Vince. Outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning more to play. And then when Cooney died at first, and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought if only Casey could get but a whack at that. We put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake. And the former was a loo, and the latter was a cake. So upon that stricken multitude, grim melancholy sat. For there seemed but little chance of Casey's getting to the bat. But Flynn had a drive with a single to the wonderment of all. And Blake the much despised tore the cover of the ball. And when the dust had lifted, and the men saw what had occurred, there was Johnny safe at second, and then a hug at third. Then from five thousand throats and more, there rose a lusty yell. It rattled in the dell. It knocked upon the mountain and resounded on the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. 
There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt was Casey at the bat. ground the ball into his hip. Defiance gleamed in Casey's eye, a sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered spear came hurtling through the air. And Casey stood a watching it in the haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball on the inside. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches, black of people, there went up a muffled roar. Like the beating of the storm that is upon a sturdy distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! Shouted someone on the stand. And it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visit shown.
as I put the program together for this afternoon, I had this Americana kind of a theme. And then after it was put together, I thought, oh, I should have called it transcriptions because a number of the pieces that we're playing, including the next one, American Folk Rhapsody Number no. 1, originally was a piece that was written for band and transcribed then back to orchestra, which is sort of what's often not done. It's usually orchestra pieces that are turned into band pieces. Um, so here's uh, Claire Grimman's American Folk Rhapsody based on four familiar or not so familiar folk tunes.
Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, the wind ensemble, wind ensemble will follow us. Um, our string section, violins especially, have grown, and that's really neat. We're still looking for more cellos and violas to help fill out that section, but uh, that's coming along too. Thanks again for your presence, your support. Um, these people meet on Monday nights. They enjoy what they do, and uh, we've had a great working relationship for, uh, this is moving into my fourth year now. We'd like to end with American Salute, uh, based on Johnny Comes Marching Home.
it's a one wood quintet, and this piece is falls right in smack dab in the middle of Americana. It's a piece by um, written by Aaron Copeland to the uh, well-known children's song "I Bought Me a Cat." <laughs> and you're probably wondering, well, why is there a French horn in the Woodwind Quintet? I'm sure there's a very good reason for that, but that's, it's always been that way. Woodwind Quintet, it blends beautifully with the ensemble. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have a bassoon player, but uh, Van Zetler has uh, uh, filled in beautifully on the, uh, the E-flat um, contra alto clarinet. So it's an unusual instrument that he has the, the pleasure of playing. He doesn't get to play that very much, so I think that it worked out really nicely. I'd like to thank the, uh, the Parkland Wind, Wind Ensemble All-Stars for that. So.
Thank you very much. That was a uh, selection called Pan Americana by Victor Herbert, who's best known for uh, some of his light opera works, including Babes in Toyland. Um, so that represented three different kind of sections of Americana, which, which is, goes right along with our theme uh, for today, Americana. Uh, our next selection is a more contemporary piece that we hope you'll enjoy. This one is by a composer named Mark Camphouse. And uh, he's from the Chicago area, but he and his family were on family vacation um, out west. And uh, when they went to Yosemite, uh, Mark Camphouse sort of forgot that he was on vacation and automatically went into work mode because he was so inspired by the beauty of Yosemite. And this piece is designed to reflect that, his inspiration from that moment, Yosemite Autumn.
Yosemite Autumn. The next tune we'd like to do is uh, a, uh, another tune by Leroy Anderson. The orchestra just played Blue Tango, which is a wonderful Leroy Anderson piece. And he's famous for a lot of tunes that, whether you know the names of them or not, they're familiar tunes that, that are just exhilarating and, and fun and optimistic. And this one's no different. This one actually is a pretty energetic piece that we have a lot of fun playing by Leroy Anderson. It's called Fiddle Battle. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So this next tune is a, is a little step to the side from the Americana theme. Uh, it's called Celtic Ritual uh, by uh, a very American composer arranger named John Higgins. He's well known also for some of his other uh, band arrangements, for jazz band, for marching band, um, and he's written a lot in the popular vein, but this one's more, um, you know, in a classical um, genre. Um, and it represents three, there's several different sections in this and some different time signatures, and it's a lot of fun to play, and it's just a good sounding piece. It's really well arranged. So we hope you enjoy Celtic Ritual.
thank you. Once again, we'd like to thank you for coming out today uh, to see the orchestra and the wind ensemble here at Parkland College. Um, I have to say what a pleasure, what an honor it is to stand in front of these wonderful musicians who give up of their time uh, to be here. Most of these are community members, so uh, they represent not just Parkland College, but the entire community of Champaign, Urbana, and surrounding areas. So it's, it's, it's a real privilege to be, to be here doing what I do. And they're, they're wonderful to work with, and they work hard, and uh, it's been a real pleasure. Um, we'd like to wind up today's uh, concert for you with uh, a piece by one of my favorite composer arrangers, a gentleman named Sammy Nestico, who's best known for arrangements that he's done for the Count Basie Orchestra. But he is also a prolific writer for uh, military and concert band. And uh, this next piece is very America, Americana sounding piece that we hope you'll enjoy. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun for us to play. Um, it's called American Spice. <laughs> 